É, eu conheci o homeschool no Brasil através de uma família que eu cheguei a conhecer que fazia educação domiciliar e eu me interessei muito pelo tema por ser algo diferente no Brasil. I came to know about homeschooling in Brazil through a family that I met here in Brazil and then through that family I began to become interested in the subject. Eu sei que aqui tem pessoas de diferentes países e talvez vocês não conheçam a realidade brasileira da academia. Um, I know there are people from many different countries and maybe some of you don't know the reality of the United States uh, Brazilian University. É, nós não falamos muito sobre homeschool e existe uma é, certa ignorância dos professores a respeito do tema. Eles não sabem o que é educação domiciliar ainda. So there, there's a lot of lack of knowledge on the subject in the universities here in Brazil. So a lot of prof university professors don't know what to talk about it. Existe muito preconceito e muitos argumentos que já foram é, derrubados fora do, do Brasil, mas que aqui ainda são um problema. There's a lot of prejudice and a lot of arguments that have been already knocked down in other countries, but here they're still being raised. Então, é uma necessidade muito grande é fomentar a pesquisa acadêmica, e eu acho que esse trabalho que eu fiz foi um primeiro esforço nesse sentido. It's very important to do um, to do a lot of research and it's desculpa, me perdi. É, tem necessidade de fomentar a pesquisa para é, aproximar as visões. It's necessary to have a lot of research to be able to approach different views on the subject. Isso. E um discurso às vezes pode parecer polarizado. Eu sou contra ou eu sou a favor. Mas na academia nós temos que trazer todas as opiniões para o debate. Então o meu trabalho foi um pouco nessa perspectiva. Uh, discourses may seem polarized many times, one against the other. But in a research, university research, we need to bring in all points of view. É, então, o tema do meu trabalho, ele é sobre a principal questão que talvez a gente está enfrentando hoje. The theme of my work is probably the main question that is being faced today. E a gente ouviu um pouco sobre isso em, vários, em várias falas hoje. We heard a lot of, of and different speeches today about that. Quem vai decidir sobre a educação das crianças? Serão... O, os pais, o Estado ou a própria criança? Who decide on the education of the children, the parents, the state or the child? No Brasil nós chamamos isso de o discurso sobre a titularidade de direitos. We Quem call, é o titular da, ao direito à educação? We call that the right, who has the right to education over the child. Então eu vou apresentar essas três per perspectivas e o que a literatura apresenta sobre elas. So I'm going to show you some perspective and then what literature speaks on the, on the subject. Na primeira perspectiva, apresentando é, o que as pessoas que defendem os pais como titulares do direito. The first perspective is where the parents have the right to education over their children. Nós ouvimos hoje pela manhã que a Declaração Universal dos Direitos Humanos, no artigo 26, fala que é prerrogativa dos pais escolher o tipo de educação. We heard this morning that in the Declaration of Human Rights, Article 26, it's the right of the parents over the children. Esse é um dos principais argumentos. This is one of the main arguments. Outro argumento é que é, a, a educação, ela pertence à esfera privada e não pública, e portanto deveriam ser os pais aqueles que é, tem o direito à educação. Another argument is that the education belongs to the private, not to the public sector, and therefore should be the parents who decide that. Outros estudos ainda apontam para alguns argumentos, como por exemplo, é, o argumento de que a criança entrar muito cedo na escola seria é, prejudicial para ela e para o seu desenvolvimento. Other researches show, other researches show that um, children. Entrar cedo, muito, muito cedo na escola uh, pode ser prejudicial. Yeah, and children entering the school too early would be to, um, would be damaging to them. Além disso, temos o argumento de que os pais são os mais é, é, capazes de escolher pelas crianças. We also have the argument that the parents are more capable of choosing for their children. Por amarem elas e por estarem interessados no futuro delas. For loving them and having an interest in their future. E por último, é a administração da educação pelos pais geraria uma atenção mais individualizada, já que os pais são especialistas nos filhos. Uh, also through the parents, this would uh, engender a more individualistic type of, of teaching for the children, since the parents are more interested in their children. 
Porém, existem alguns contrapontos a esses argumentos. But there are also other counterpoints to these arguments. É, existe a legislação brasileira que define que a matrícula é compulsória dos 4 aos 17 anos, como vocês já sabem. There's a Brazilian legislation that says it's compulsory for children to be in school from 4 to 17. Existe é, o argumento de que a escola, o acesso à escola no Brasil é uma conquista histórica e por isso não pode ser menosprezado. Historically speaking in Brazil, access to schooling is a, is a very great conquest, so it shouldn't be denied. E os interesses dos pais podem conflitar com os interesses da criança, como nos casos de negligência, por exemplo. And the interests of the parents could conflict with the interests of the children, for example, negligence. Então, a maioria dos autores, mesmo que defendam a posição dos pais, acaba defendendo também que tem algum tipo de regulamentação do Estado. So, most parents, even though they um, defend the, the parents of the uh, position of the parents, also defend that there should be some kind of regulation on top of this. Na perspectiva que defende o Estado como o titular à educação, The perspective that the defends that the state is the right to education. Nós temos alguns argumentos, como por exemplo. We have a few arguments, for example. Que a escola é que é interesse do Estado colocar as crianças na escola por ser um ambiente que vai gerar é, participação política e contato com outras culturas e ideias. It is, in, it is in the interest of the state to put the children in school so that they can be in contact with other ideologies and, and systems of life. É, outro argumento seria de que as, não pode ser privado da criança o direito de ter contato com pessoas que pensam de formas diferentes dos pais e vão até é, argumentar a favor de outras ideias. É, that also another argument is that parents shouldn't um, keep their children from other points of view and perspectives and that if that's kept from them that it will, it will, will not be good for them. E alguns juristas afirmam que, pela Constituição brasileira, o Estado precederia a família na, no direito à educação. Some jurists think that it's not... Um, perdão, perdi. É, alguns juristas falam que o Estado precede a, a família no direito à educação. Some jurists say that the state is, is, uh, has supremacy above parents in education. Então, claro, tem críticas a essa visão também. Como, por exemplo, a fragilidade pela incapacidade do Estado de garantir uma educação de qualidade. Of course, there are counter-arguments for that, such as the fragility of the state, of being incapable of, of keeping its education level. Porque matricular não significa garantir que o direito à educação está sendo cumprido. Registration in school does not mean that education is being maintained. Outra coisa é que o Estado tem interesses em manter a sua hegemonia de poder. Another thing is that the state wants to keep its position of power. Então ele pode usar a escola para manter a sua ideologia e ensiná-la. So it could use a school to teach its own ideologies to the children. Então essas pessoas apontam para o cuidado que se deve ter nessa regulamentação. So some people point out to the care that should be taken in the regulation. Of the laws. Então, indo para a última perspectiva, que entende a criança como o titular ao direito, so the last po uh, where children have the right to education. nós temos a Convenção de Direitos da Criança, We have the Convention of the Rights of the Ch Child, que tem esses dois artigos, these two articles, que garantem que o melhor interesse da criança deve ser defendido e também que a criança que já tiver capacidade deve fazer a sua escolha. That the best interest of the child shall be considered and that the child shall be able to choose. Porém, a gente tem é, autores criticando esse, esses, é, esses, essas expressões. But we also have our, um, authors criticizing these expressions. Primeiro porque o melhor interesse é um pouco relativo, dependendo de qual ponto de vista é o melhor para você. Because the best interest will depend on the point of view. E também porque a criança capaz de formar a sua opinião é, vai depender do que você considera que é a criança já autônoma. Uh, because also when a child is going to be, be forming his own opinion, it depends on when you consider a child autonomous. E nós temos é, um receio de deixar a criança escolher, porque ela pode tomar é, decisões imaturas 
que no futuro ela não tomaria, como por exemplo, eu não quero estudar de nenhuma forma. Um, because we're we concerned that children might make decisions that are not good enough for them, like for example, to not want to study. É, no geral, então, é, tem um último autor que vai criticar, na verdade, a forma como o Estado e a família brigam pela autoridade no direito, mas que na verdade deixam a criança de lado. Uh, we'll have another author who's going to talk about how uh, parents don't believe that the the state should have a right over them, but that also leave the the children to their own devices. Então, é, o que eu queria concluir com isso tudo é que na literatura brasileira, principalmente, nós temos a criança majoritariamente como a titular do direito. In Brazilian literature we have uh, most the, the greatest opinion that ch children should have the right to education. E eu queria deixar essa última frase. Pode falar. I I'm going to leave this with you with this last phrase, final phrase. Porque a criança, ela não pertence nem ao estado. Because the child does not belong neither to the state. Porque ela não serve simplesmente para cumprir as suas demandas ideológicas. Because the child is not there just simply to perform its ideological demands. Mas também as crianças não são só dos pais, porque nós não criamos as nossas crianças para nós mesmos. Because the children are not just to the parents, because we don't raise our children for ourselves. Nós criamos elas para o mundo. We raise them for the world. E eu, pela fala de muitos, já percebi que também é a perspectiva é, apontada pelo homeschool. And uh, from from the discourse from the different people around here, I noticed that's the same position pointed out from homeschooling. Porque nós queremos não proteger as crianças, mas prepará-las para o futuro. We don't want to protect the children, but prepare them for the future. Então é importante ter como principal ponto de vista a construção da autonomia da criança. So it's very important to have them, um, in view the construction of the autonomy of the child e também considerar que ela é um sujeito individual que tem res, é, direitos a serem respeitados and consider that it's a, a, an individual and has individual rights to be respected muito obrigada pela sua atenção thank you very much for your attention thank you Natalia and now we have Angelica A little background on Angelica. Veneta Frankie is a candidate for a master's degree in education and new technologies at the Universidad de La Sabana in Chile, Colombia. The objective of her research is to determine how to guide home educating parents in seeking alternative ways to educate their children while integrating human, educational, and technological perspectives through a blended learning environment. Angelica is part of an investigative team called Education Without School at Universidad Nacional de Colombia. He collaborates on the workshop with the topic Learning About Education Alternatives and Alternatives to Education. Angelica is a mother of three children whom she has educated at home since 2014. There you go. Okay, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon. I'm going to try to speak in English. Uh, I know my English is not that fluent as, as I would like, but, I, but I'm going to try. If I need some help, uh, Mr. Alberto Solano is going to help me. Please, <laughs> thank you. OK, um, my name is Angelica. I'm from Colombia. And um, I'm going to give you some information of context of my country. It's going to be in slides that are ahead. Uh, first, it's not working. OK, I, I, I study. I, I am studying a master in education and new technologies in a university that is private. private. Uh, its name is Universidad de La Sabana. Uh, that university, uh, and especially that master's, 
um, studied uh, all the ICT's impact um, and the education educational processes. So um, I started uh, studying that masters because I was looking for a project of life that can uh, integrate my my personal and family life. That's why, because uh, I I worked for 16 years in many companies. Um, I worked uh, because my my dream was uh, to have that kind of success that some sometimes uh, people sell us. No, it is success with the material things, but sometimes you live uh, your life and your family. And I realized after many years that my family is the most important thing in my life, my kids. So when I started to study these masters, I didn't know that, uh, that uh, I was gonna find something as, as homeschooling. But it was, and it was a, uh, a, a, an excellent moment for me. It, it was a, like a eureka moment because uh, it started to uh, many things about uh, about um, a new project of life with my family and the opportunity to be with my kids and also to do that I, what I like to do that is to study, to research, to do all these things. So, So what I'm thank you. So what I'm gonna what I'm want to try to tell you is is to to tell you that this research starts with my life. Yes, with my kids. They are my inspiration, and that's why I am trying to to mix everything. I know life is like that, mixing everything. And what I try to tell you is that mix what I'm feeling as a mother, what I'm feeling as a person, what I'm feeling as a researcher, okay? So that's why we are looking for parents. When I say parents, I don't know. <laughs> when I say parents, it's because parents in homeschooling we have a lot of needs to, um, uh, uh, th that comes with, uh, with, uh, this, with this approach because we, we need some guide, you know? Some guide in different perspectives. So the, the objective of this research is to determine uh, <coughs> how is the how, how is a, a, a way, a guide for the parents for seeking different, uh, different alternatives in three perspectives. Human, when I say human, it is more emotional about that guide that, that they have to give to, to their kids. Uh, the other per perspective is educational because as a parents we, we do have some needs about the, the uh, pedag pedagogy, uh, strategies to, to, for learning. Uh, so in that way, we are looking for that. And uh, also technological, because my master's is in ICTs. So we are studying how ICTs today can get involved with educational processes. Um, please. Thank you. Okay, uh, here it is the methodology. 
in this in this uh, process, uh, I have been doing some synergies with other persons, with other people that are working with this kind of education. So in that way, I met with Erwin Fabian and the Universidad Nacional de Colombia, and we did like a synergy because they have working and studying for many years education without a school. And uh, we are from La Sabana, we are trying to propose how can we um, match the ICTs in all these processes. So for that reason, we said, okay, this research can be a participa par participatory action research, and we can get involved with the families, ask them, uh, go to the families and ask them, how is the uh, best way to be guided or, or which uh, needs they have, which motivations they have, and how can we fulfill those motivations or those needs, okay, in those three perspectives. Uh, we are looking for a sample of 70 families. Actually, all, uh, the, the university, the national university, has a strong, um, list of families that are doing uh, homeschooling and unschooling. So in this moment, we are running the survey and also some focus group on the on, on next days. So that means that we are looking for 70 families to answer those surveys. Uh, those surveys have questions in the three perspectives that I already told you. Data collection, there were like two moments. The first year of the, of the research, because I have been doing this research for one year and a half. It's going to be in total two years. But for the first year was like a, a, a research in uh, data collection, but in uh, books, uh, on the web. Uh, papers uh, from many countries, and also uh, was a moment that, as I as I am a homeschooler parent mother, so I get involved with many people, uh, with the, with my kids also. So for that reason, uh, that that uh, research has also my my own experience and our own experience as a family. Thank you. Okay, some information about our country, Colombia. Uh, I, I think it's important to give you some information because we are in a moment um, that is special for this kind of, uh, of education. Uh, actually, we don't have any specific um, cifra. Uh, numbers, we don't have a specific numbers. We are trying to have more research for that. Okay, but for now, approximately, uh, according to Erwin Fabian and Universidad Nacional de Colombia, there are like a 1,500 families doing uh, homeschooling to 2,000 families. Okay, in and the movement is running and growing uh, too much. <laughs> okay, uh, Colombia. Colombia uh, is in South America. Uh, we are close to Venezuela. We have frontier with with Brazil, Ecuador, Peru, and our country has fifty. Uh, 50 million, approximately, people. Uh, half of the of the population uh, are women. The other half uh, men. Uh, um, kids are like a 28 percent of the of the population are are kids, uh, are are children. Sorry, and uh, we are we have been in a armed conflict for many years. But 
also there is a hope for the conflict that is the peace. In Colombia, we are doing like an agreement of peace. What does it mean? That means that to work in families is the best opportunity now because many people is looking for that. Many people is waiting for that. Many people know that education, it's a, it's a way, but many people doesn't know that, for example, alternative alternative ways like this can be reintegrate the people who has been in the war for many years. So there there is an opportunity to research and to do those things related to homeschooling. Okay, there are some information that I think it's important now. Thank you. Okay, so the problem statement uh, defined that parents, more than children, parents are the cha change agents of the education. So in that way, the social impact of homeschooling is huge, yes? But what does it mean? And, 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 and I, will I would like to relate it to the human right the father, the, the father, the, the mother and the father, the parents, we have a special responsibility with that. And the responsibility, and this is according what Universidad Nacional de Colombia has as a philosophy. They said, okay, as a parent, you need to see your story of breeding. You can't go on doing or saying that you're gonna homeschool if you don't heal your own uh, heridas, uh, wounds. wounds, yeah. It is important because we are educating holistic, you know? So for that reason, it's very important. In that way, that uh, we, we have that conclusion, we have to work uh, giving the hand to the parents. For that reason, we are saying we want to guide them. Okay, so children are facing many challenges, Fa uh, parents too. This is for generations. This is the opportunity to heal <laughs> new generations. So for that reason, we say, okay, we're gonna focus on the parents in this research. Um, this is supported by some out, uh, authors that said that uh, as, a, as a parent, when a parent is in front of homeschooling, they challenge themselves to say, okay, this could be my glory, but also this could be my failure. <laughs> so in that way, they need Oh, we need that help, and and as a ma as a mother, I know all the time uh, that I really need that help. Si quiere pasemos. Okay, so three perspectives. When I say humanities, emotional, educational, and technological perspective. Mm, okay, uh, um, to finalize is. It is a blended learning environment because from this research, the university has that kind of uh, emphasis. They want that we can materialize in some way the research. So they are saying, okay, why don't we do uh, some learning environment for the parents, but that could be materialized, including ICTs. So for that reason, the research is going to have the study, okay, the, the, the numbers, with the families, with the surveys, with the focus groups, and the other, the other part of the research is going to be like a proposal for the environment. That environment, it's going to be blended. So it's going to be with some spaces that already we are already doing with uh, uh, Universidad Nacional, Okay, and the other, the other part of the environment is with ICTs, uh, 
groups and many platforms where we are looking for that. Okay, that's Thank it. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a challenge, especially when you, you know, have language and translation to get done in that much time. And next we have Philip, while well, he's coming up. Dr. Philippe Bongran is associate professor at Serge, I don't know how to say it, Sergi Pontois. How'd I do? Sergi Pontois. Horribly. <laughs> University of France, a member of the EMA, School Change Learning Research Center. He is a specialist in educational policies. He is the coordinator of a research project devoted to home education in France called Crocier Home Education colon, an exception or a paradoxical expression of the schooling process, question mark. Protiv gathers eight scholars from different French universities and organizes a common colloquium. Exactly. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks to the board for having selected my proposal and to more broadly to have uh, organized this uh, research track. My presentation will, um, does it work? Okay, you have to do it. So, I'm sorry, there are a lot of slides. Hmm? Ah, yes, it works. There you go. Yeah, yeah. But I the go batteries. Back. Okay. Okay, so my presentation will be in four parts. The first will be to depict the French situation as far as home education is concerned, and I will sum it up in the phrase that this is a paradox paradoxical situation, and I will explain how. Then in the second point, uh, no, sorry, up, <laughs> it goes too fast. Well, it's okay. Uh, so, um, just stop. Second part is to see how this f uh, empirical situation may be theorized and saw from a social science point of view. Third, I will try to um, raise some hypotheses to explain this uh, paradox. And fourth, I will present the broad pro research project uh, where this, uh, this uh, communication comes from. So first point is a, a kind of presentation of home education in France. And I will sum it up as the question, as far as the home education right is concerned, as a ghost right. Uh, why? Because uh, first, home education has, has always been legal. And it's the case since uh, 1882, where uh, the major and very important uh, bill was passed at the French Parliament, where it is written that primary instruction is compulsory. So you, you, you've seen it's uh, talking about instruction and not school. And in this law, which is still, for this part, still uh, active, up to date, I mean, it's written in 1884 that this instruction might be implemented uh, either within public or private school or within families. So uh, education and instruction became generalized at the end of the 19th century and uh, home education was um, already in the legal mind. And then the uh, home education was a kind of uh, unregulated, I will precise later. And we have a second law in 1988, and this law um, framed a uh, more precisely the way for supervisors to control home education. So it's still legal, and the control and supervision became more uh, a strong uh, from the end of the 19th century. Um. So it has always been legal, though uh, it remains underpracticed. So we have some figures, but very few figures. So in 2010, uh, we have in France about 8 million children who are uh, under the law of uh, mandate compulsory instruction between 6 and se 16 uh, years old and we have exactly uh, about 3,000 uh, children whose parents registered to as home educated children. So uh, we can add to these uh, children uh, about 2,000 who are 
home educated, but who registered in a distance institu education uh, institution, but a private and independent institution. And the third figure is the number of children who are uh, schooled because they registered to the public distance education institution. So as a whole, we are about 20,000 uh, children, and these figures um, raise controversy. For instance, uh, you have um, some um, groups that think and defend the, the idea that only the three first thousand are real home educated, and then some say, no, we are 20,000, and I would say that the, the most uh, active uh, advocacy groups really uh, promote the 3,000 figure. So in 2010, we had these figures, and then um, uh, uh, some years before, at the end, uh, when the law, the second law I mentioned uh, was passed, we have we had uh, about a thousand uh, student less. That's why we, we have people who defend the idea that home education is growing. And what is less unknown, and that's one of the first results of our, our research, is that we found in the national uh, records some figures from the beginning of the 20th century, and we saw that it was about the same figures at the beginning of the 20th, uh, 20th century when the population was really uh, less developed. That is to say that in percentages it's not so obvious to say that home education is growing and growing. And we, it was the same uh, for another figure that we discovered. Okay, So it remains under-practiced and the question could be uh, uh, whether uh, we consider it as a puzzle, and I think here you can think it's a puzzle because you know some of the good uh, reasons to practice home education. So you could say, well, it's legal and they do not practice it. So it's interesting to research that. So that's the question in the second part of my presentation. Uh, I would say that uh, we can, stay, uh, we can um, have a f an, an hypothesis uh, from a um, a, a field of uh, social science research that consider this situation as a matter of ignorance. So I will just give one clue because I do not have so many times. If you go to the um, website of the first uh, Parents uh, Home Educators Association, you will see that's the, f the, um, the first uh, web page when you log in. And it's written in French. The, the main line is, in, Fran in France, uh, home education is legal. School is not compulsory. And why is it written? Because everyone, or fast everyone in France, is convinced that school is compulsory. So it's, it's something really ignored. So it's, uh, I won't develop this, but in social science, we have a, a f uh, some uh, scholars who are thinking things uh, as the social manufacturer of ignorance. They to say that we can research how this uh, unknowledge, non-knowledge may raise and exist. Uh, well, you we have some literature, or I don't want to develop it, thanks. Um, and we can have some tr uh, ideas to explain how this ignorance is produ produced. Here's the first one. We could say that it's the French culture. In Fran France, we are uh, convinced that uh, school is um, compulsory. Uh, so here you have the picture uh, of a stamp which was printed for the first century of the law. I've, I mentioned this law from the uh, 1882, and you see it's written, uh, the, um, our public school, which is free, m compulsory, and uh, like. So there is a, a common French phrase talking about mandatory school, l'école obligatoire. Everyone thinks that since 1882, it's common knowledge in France uh, that we have an école gratuite, publique et obligatoire, and though it's not the case. Uh, we also, we, uh, as a matter of a culture, we could see s also think that this ignorance is produced by the fact that in France um, we have a, a special uh, um, uh, relationships with religion and school is in this uh, history and with the concept of laicity we are not thinking that even if we were uh, highly religious 
uh, how is the case in some states where uh, home education developed. So it, it's not necessary to leave the French school even if we are strongly religious because of the, our culture of school. So I won't detail. Laicity is the, th the way to consider the relationship between school and re religion here. That is to say that you can be highly religious and think that there's no problem to go to the public French school because pub French pub public school is laic, that is to say respectful of all uh, religion. Yes, so we could say that uh, as an organization also explain this ignorance, but I don't have the time. I have five minutes, okay. Uh, so just go, maybe, I, I just say one word, yes? Uh, that in France we have a private school that is very, very, very near our public schools, and that explains that it's not difficult for people, even if they are not religious, to go to the private schools. So. This organization of the educational system is an explanation to this ignorance of home education. So it would be an organizational hypothesis. And then I have a third uh, hypothesis I will now develop. It's about the fact that public policies produce or might produce this social ignorance of the right not to school. There are other hypotheses we could imagine. I just want to mention one is the fact that maybe the parents' associations have a role to play in explaining or not this ignorance. But I won't develop that. Uh, so my third point is just to develop this hypothesis that, that uh, public policies might explain this ignorance of the right. First, uh, so th th these are the result of uh, the first uh, reading of the French uh, debates when the bill I mentioned uh, were passed. So our representative discussed about this law and we can find when they had talked about uh, home education because it was in the law. And the first thing we see is that in this uh, representative debates, uh, thanks to the political agenda of the context, they are not interested at all by home education. They are totally focusing on other things and they are just so I said ex e eclipsing this right, overshadowing the right to home education because it's not the, 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 the political uh, point at the political agenda at the moment. And then you have another interesting thing that we can state that in the political language and the legal language, there is a way to eclipse this right and you can see it's maybe too, too, too little but when we read the French law, here it's from in the internet, you see chapter one. Yeah. It's written and it's the law, it's not a, 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 a common discourse, it's talking about l'obligation scolaire, that is to say the, the uh, man, uh, compulsory schooling. And the sentence that follow is the sentence from 8082 uh, stating that uh, primary instruction is compulsory, but they anyway they are talking about obligation scolaire, compulsory schooling. It's a phrase that is in the not only in the French people uh, common culture, but th in the legal text, uh. though it's not uh, correct. So it's very n surprising. Then there is a, a, th a second way to make this go uh, right uh, a ghost right is to shirking this right. That is to say, not to develop, not to produce the regulation, not not to develop the fact that this is a right. That is to say, that it goes with a frame with supervisors, and su I won't develop because I don't have the time. And then the third way was to. Um, uh, melt this right and the question of home education in the discussion with some um, very um, exceptional cases so uh, and problematic cases. I'm thinking about the debates that occurred when the 1988 bill was passed and when they strengthened the supervising of home education control uh, it was they were talking about the death of a small uh, child who died in a, a sect sectarian how do you say a sect a sect and it was because of this uh, horrible death that they came to strengthen uh, this control so 
in their discourses, maybe in the mind, home education was uh, maybe demonized, we could make the hypothesis, because it was uh, seen as something that has to do with the uh, sect. Okay, we could develop others' hypothesis, thanks. And the last point, uh, I have to work, I, I won't give make the fourth point, so make, could you <laughs> show it fast? There was just a presentation of the field. Yes, more, more, until the sum up. Once, still, yes, yes. I will stop you. <laughs> once, once. <laughs> that was the presentation. Please just go very fast. Fast, fast. <laughs> it's a presentation of the, yeah, and stop. <laughs> so what that th this is the summary of what you've seen. And then once more, in the last, just uh, two thanks. <laughs> Please one more, one mas, por favor. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, sorry for the fourth part. I want to apologize in advance to all our presenters. I know that we are. You put your heart and soul into these presentations, and we're really forcing you to condense. Hopefully, we will have uh, room in our in our other research workshops, the the roundtable, to have fuller discussion of your. Uh, presentations. Maria? She's here. Yes. Okay. While she's coming forward, Maria Veldman holds a Master's of Education and is working on her doctoral dissertation with the Universidad de Girona. Her PhD research will focus on homeschooling with a specific focus on the socialization of homeschool children. She is a member of ALE, the Association para la Libre Educación en Spain the National Spanish Homeschool Association, as well as CCRH, Coordinadora Catalana de la Reconeximento y Regulación de la Homeschooling, the Homeschool Association in Catalan. She is a mother of five cinco children and has homeschooled them since May 2011, Once, when she began researching and studying about homeschooling. Right. Ready, Good. set, and I am strict 15 minutes. I will give you a five minute okay, warning okay, and a okay. one minute warning. Okay. 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 So, uh, no. <laughs> the horrible question what about socialization? Oh, <laughs> are you locking your children in the house? Uh, that's why I choose this subject because I'm homeschooling uh, since five years ago. And when I start homeschooling, I said, let's study a little bit more because uh, I'm a teacher and I wanted to do something positive for the uh, scientific area. So I say, let's, let's see with my children and how this goes and with the other families that we joined in the community. And that's why I tried uh, to research about socialization. Is it? Uh, no? <laughs> I choose these two photos because I went last year in a congress and John Abbott, the president of the 21 Centuries Learning Initiative, uh, he showed us these two photographs. Uh, the congress was about uh, personal education, but I think it really fits here. <laughs> okay, the objectives of the, yeah, that photo is enough, I can go now. <laughs> the objectives was uh, to find out if it's true, the prejudice that the um, homeschooling children are not sociable. And to contribute with the international homeschooling researchers, that there are hundreds and thousands of researchers that say that they are well sociable and they don't really need the school to socialize. So that's the hypothesis. You can, you can. Um, for the theoret theoret theoretical framework, sorry, my English is not as good as I thought. Uh, in Spain, the situation is similar uh, to Colombia. Okay, so it's not uh, it's not legal homeschooling, but it's not forbidden either. So that gives is in a in a situation that sometimes some families can have trouble. Uh, we have three congresses from 2010 to 2011. They were international uh, homeschooling congress. So that's very good. 
and we have lots of researchers from that congress and then we have Ana Maria Redondo the she grew she's a politician she grew up uh, and also a teacher in law uh, homeschooling can be constitutional and then uh, two, only two dissertations at uh, the moment, uh, Madeleine Goiria and Carlos Cabo. Also, I had a look to other uh, foreign um, contributions, and even I look thousand, what I would really find interesting was this answer, that the, uh, the wife of Manfred, Manfred uh, ask and say. <laughs> I think it really is my favorite answer. <laughs> Also, I had a look to other researches, and all of them, the conclusions is that the children, uh, they don't really need school to be uh, socialized, and that uh, is what we, we try to demonstrate in this research. Well, let's focus about definition. What really means socialization? Uh, if you ask the government, they will give you a very short answer. Be a good citizen. But we think that uh, it's more than that, and it's also more than the people thinks in the street that is having lots of friends. So for us, the socialization is an integral development that includes all of this. Academic acquisition, obviously. Rules and values, that's very important. Social relation, and culture and traditions acquisitions, and inside education. I think most of these are taking part in a family, in a family. Parents are the most important uh, teachers for this. And what does homeschooling mean? Because nearly all of us know very good about homeschooling, but the people in the street, they don't really know. And they think that our children are locked in the class, in the, in the, in the, in the house. And yeah, and the, t the mother is a teacher. So how do you do with five children? And one is old and the other one is a baby. And I always answer, it's learning in the environment. We don't keep them inside the house. We go nearly three times a week out. One day to the library, another day we have experts, we have joining other groups, activities. So sometimes you have to choose. You have too many things. You have to choose. Today I'm not going there, I'm going to the museum instead. Um, so the best part is the empirical framework. I really enjoy this part because we uh, find um, and uh, test by uh, recognize a very good uh, evaluation body. So we didn't create the test. It was already one that was made um, by Thea Ediciones, Martorey, and Payas were the authors. And that test uh, gave us five items about socialization, if the children were good socialization. Uh, one of them were consideration for others, other one was self-control in social relations, shyness, social reserve, social anxiety, and leaderships. And the test has another one, the sincerity to, to control if the test was fine or not. And also we complete the research with a focus group. There was a discussion with three families that took the children to the school and three homeschooling families. The results, the average answers about the first item, consideration with others. Homeschoolers are doing good. <laughs> the second one. Uh, the overage about self-control in social relations is a big difference. The way that homeschooling children can control themselves and have good behavior. So third one, please. Overage item about social anxiety. That's really, really scary. Children in the school have anxiety. The overage item, no, I think you missed one. <laughs> That's the last one. <coughs> Let's see, go, can you go? And, ah, okay, maybe it's another one. <laughs> shyness, yeah, shyness and social reserve. Also homeschooling is doing well. And now, yes, now the last one, the leadership is the, that one, yeah. And is it the only one that we don't have many difference, but also because maybe we don't have to be uh, leaders because uh, it's the only one. And then the sincerity, 
about the last one. We also noticed that maybe the school children are used to lie. <laughs> I don't know, something is wrong here. It's a big difference. So the results of the test were very, very good. We can conclude that the children are sociable. They are friendly, they are polite, they are assertive, they are happy and cheerful, active, courageous, creative, and they really have initiative. I think these conclusions are similar to the Clapton Carpenter this year, the, the international investigations that we, 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 we saw. And about focus group results were also very good. I mean, it was a very nice conversation. It had to be only one hour, and we, we stayed nearly three hours with the focus group. And all the parents, even the ones that took the children to the school, uh, they never um, they never uh, reject about uh, children's society. I mean, they were they were they knew that they were well sociable, all of them. So the main concern that the, that was the parents are the most important. They are the teachers. Even if they take the children to the school, they have to be part of the education. Education is so important. They cannot delegate. Even if they take the children to the school, that was the conclusion. And uh, family bonds are the, the most important thing for the integral development of the child. That's the conclusions. Uh, socialization is different, is, a, is completely different from a school, but that doesn't mean that it's low quality. And mm, the children show very good behavior because the family bonds and all the time parents are there. Obviously, all the research have limitations, and uh, the main problem we have in Spain is that we don't have any register. So mm, we have these two associations that um, Dr. Brian say, Ale and the Coordinadora Catalana, but it's, it's not um, the register. So we suppose we are 2,000 families in homeschooling, but in, the, in one association is 300 and the other one is 50. So there are other families that they are not in the association. That's our mm, big limitation. And the prospective is, uh, should be very interesting, are the families' researches. Oh, I still have five minutes, okay. <laughs> about the importance of the family like a social agent. Huh? Well, that's my best favorite <laughs> part. Because you can only just have a look and see, are they isolated at home, locked in for <laughs> rooms? The children in our community, in, I come from Barcelona, and we have 51 families joining us. We work like a cooperative association, and, and uh, we plan like a reading club. Once uh, um, a month, we have an interview with an author. We try to find uh, Thomas Brezina, for example. They love these books, or other authors from, from local authors, and they interview them. The, oh, we also have a project group, and once a month we also meet, and the children, they explain their projects, what they have been studying. Sometimes the little ones, the, they don't present the project, but they see, and they say, oh, mom, I'm very interested in what they say, or I want to do that. And also we do um, interviews with the professionals. We go and ask uh, doctors or mechanics. It doesn't matter the profession, but the, the policemen. We go to the place. They show how they work, how they uh, study to be a mechanic, and the children can learn. Uh, like the second photo, how is sewing the wood. We also have um, every week a trip to the museum. I think the museum knows us very well. <laughs> we try to change the uh, city, so it's not always the same museum, but um, in the museums they offer lots of uh, didactic activities, and it's uh, the best place to learn. And for us, the parents, it's good because we are also learning lots of things. I'm, I'm learning with, with my kids. 
So when people say, oh, how can you teach your child? And it's not me. I'm, I'm just helping. I'm going, I'm going, I'm learning with them. But it's the, all the environment, the, the social environment, the natural environment, everybody, the friends, uh, the grandparents, and everybody is helping us. It's a community, it's a, in, and it's a changing, it's an exchange. I teach you music, you teach mathematics to my children. It's the best way. And I hope that all the associations uh, and all the communities try to work with these bonds, because for parents it's very important to have uh, help. A little bit what you say, Angelica. Uh, we, need, we need this um, helping each other to raise our child, because alone is, is impossible. I don't know if you have any questions. We will at the end. Yes, we're going to. We will at the end. Ah, okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So will all, all four speakers come forward and, and sit or stand, maybe sit or stand near Alberto. We'll have the microphone while they're coming forward. We have about 15 minutes left. I'll start off with a question or comment, and then there'll probably be about one more per person. And we're going to sort of try to do it in order because time is of the essence. Yeah, audience too. I'll get us started. Uh, so, first of all, well, that's too organized. Who has the first question? Raise your hand. Get it go. Right here. Go and and address it to somebody. Okay. Yes. Um, to Maria. To Maria. I've I've heard a lot of stats uh, from several of the folks, and I already had heard some stats about Brazil, even though you didn't mention. But do you have any idea the number of homeschoolers uh, compared to the number of total students in Spain? I think we are 0.1%. Uh, <laughs> it's um, very little, and it's not no. I mean, <laughs> it was, uh, it doesn't matter. It was legal, homeschooling in Spain. It was legal in 1857 in the Moyano law. And then it happened something very curious. In 1990, they they confuse the, um, the word education for scholarization. I don't know the translation of scholarization. I'm not sure if they know they are confused. <laughs> but it's very, uh, you can see the law before and then in 1990, they make that confusion. Okay, next. We'll keep it moving and anybody? Because if you don't, I have 15 questions. Okay, right there. Uh, this question is for Angelica. Uh, and um, I was wondering how you selected 70 as your sample size of families and um, what you did to recruit them and, and how your participation went. In English. <laughs> um, the, the, survey is running now okay what we do uh, what what we did is is to do a synergy with the universidad nacional because they already have a research uh, from many years so they have a list they have the, the names of the families that already are doing homeschooling so we are um, um estamos o sea, creemos que vamos a llegar a las 70. Uh, those 70 families, because the list it's big. The list is like a, a thousand families. So for that reason, we are looking for that for for that amount. Uh, 70 families can give us like a view of the of the phenomenon and the way they teach with ICTs and with, uh, with all the perspectives, the emotional, the educational, and the technology. Is it, is, it all, is it all convenient sampling, or are you trying to do any kind of stratification, or? We're, we're, gonna, to we're gonna have some uh, de de demographic okay. uh, information, and in that way, we can see other aspects okay. that we can, th that it could be for another research, but right. okay. we're gonna Next. have it. Right here, uh, Philippe, what are you going to do next? We're, I know you have, a, a, tell us about the research you have. 
going forward. What are, what are you going to do next, she said, in case uh, I'll, I'll help here. Can you repeat the question because it's um, been I'm sorry. Uh, I would like, uh, Philippe is the head of a research team in France, and so I'm asking him what he's going to do next uh, with his research. Thanks. Um, we, uh, in our team, we have a research project that we are dealing with the French National Agen uh, Research Agency to make it funded. And we have three main uh, topics that we want to research, and namely um, um, the way that supervisors visit um, home educators to check what's going on in the family. So we would like to, we have already begun to make interviews with them and we want to follow them and uh, accompany them, go with them into families to see what are, uh, what have these supervisors in mind when they are in a kind of uh, empty uh, legal frame to wh what is interesting for them to check in within families. That's the first of the three points. Then we would like to write the history of the parents' associations because we we've already done some interviews and we saw that during many years uh, parents who homeschooled had really n uh, did not want to make their cause a collective cause. They wanted to be free and alone and they did not need to make uh, an advocacy group so it's an explanation, okay, it, well, that's the second point. And the third point is to, we would like to research the different kinds of pedagogies <coughs> that home educators uh, uh, implement. Because there is, in France too, this kind of uh, great divide between uh, unschooling and school at home education. And as researchers, we are not totally convinced that this can, uh, th this may uh, catch the diversity of the, different pedagogies, so we would like to find how we can uh, um, uh, depict the, this, this diversity. What would be the different categories to say you have five, six, seven main ways to homeschool. And the th last thing and the th most difficult thing for us is to deal with the French national administration to get, uh, uh, to manage a way to make a big survey. That's the main, the most difficult part because uh, it's difficult to send uh, f uh, que uh, question sheets, uh, answer sheets, uh, no, question sheets to families because, it, well, we are dealing with the administration too. We would like to have a picture of uh, these 3,000 uh, children because we just have some cases, but we, we don't have an, over, uh, an overall review. This is for Natalia, and I was wondering, uh, what was your view of homeschooling before you got started, and what do you hope that this research is used for? Did you understand? Yeah. Okay, I will try to um, answer in English, okay? So we don't lo lose time. So uh, I had a view about some uh, families that lived in America, and I've heard of homeschooling up there, but I've never heard about homeschooling before m meeting this family. So it was like no knowledge for Brazilian homeschooling. So I o I've only heard about American and Canadian homeschooling. Uh, now I think it's an interesting um, option for education, but I think uh, still we have many problems to deal with because our reality, economic and social, is very different from those countries that have many laws and stuff like that. So we have to think about uh, what will be the consequences for our people and all the people, I mean o not only the, the people who want to homeschool now, but people who will want to homeschool someday if we have these laws being approved. So um, I think we have to calm down and think a lot, and I think this space is a good space for talking and thinking together, because uh, at some points it can be very good, but in other ones can we can like um, open uh, space 
two bad things to happen. Like people who will only say, oh, we are homeschooling, but then they will put this child to, to work or some things like that, that we know people have bad minds and maybe we'll do that. So if we um, approve laws, we want to assure we won't get these things happening. So I think we want to, we have to come down and look up and what's happening so we get good laws and people doing whatever they want to get the best option for the ch their child. Next. I want to got to use this, they're recording, recording my voice. Uh, so for Maria, um, so I, maybe I missed it, could you, so just some clarifying questions on your analysis. So you, you, so you compared homeschool kids and regular school kids. So who was, ac who was actually answering the question? Was it the, the parents on both sides? Okay. And then is there more uh, ask, how about the and question? Sure. Well, a simple yes or no is it's parents on, the parents were asking, you were asking the parents for both of them, right? Yeah. yeah. I, for, I forgot, and this is very important. I passed a test to the homeschool, the both homeschooling associations, the Spanish and the Catalan, and then I, I gave the test to two compulsory schools. They answer 54 homeschooling students and 47 in the school. Sorry, I missed that part, and it's important. The, the, ages, the ages were between 7 and 16. It's very white, and, but it had to be that way because the homeschooling families, you know that they have different uh, ages, so it had to be that, that way. Yeah. Follow up. Yeah, hey, personal mic. No. Uh, so, so the teachers rated the school children, and then the yeah. Oh, the children themselves did it. Okay. All right. I got it. Okay. All right. No. no I just saw. So I was just. So I, I was under the impression it was it was adults that were rating the the students. Um, and so you know that brought up the issue. I was, parents, I guess, think a little more highly of their children most of the time. So you know, if it was teachers on one side and, and parents on the other, um, if there was some you know some way to to make your findings more convincing. But yeah, that, that makes sense. Maybe I shouldn't answer that, but that last statement is factually incorrect statistically in the homeschooling world. You can answer that. But uh, I, I shouldn't talk about research because I'm not an expert here. Oh, no, you guys can have a debate. Okay, next. Tell Paul the round table. Okay, Paul, the round table's coming. Okay, next. I have a question for Natalia then. Uh, so, Natalia, I thought you did a great job of summarizing the, the, the interests of child, the parent, the state, and, and we've seen Rob Reese and others write on that and so forth. How, how do you personally, either personally or personally as a scholar, deal with the, the question of, is it true that there are really three interests? Uh, because who will decide what are the interests of the child? So my answer may not answer you, but because I'm still trying to deal with, with my questions and getting to know more the reality of these families and the reality of homeschool. So maybe what I can say to you is that I'm really uh, surprised with the things I'm uh, hearing here and in other tables around. But my, my opinion from this moment is that we have to guarantee that the family has their right to choose, but these cannot, like, um, uh, deny, deny the, the child's interest. So we have to get to know what is all the child's interest. We have to a gente tem que descobrir qual, qual é o interesse geral das crianças, chegar num acordo nisso para poder falar. Yeah, we have to to get in a num consenso, in a consens about what is the child's interest. So then we can answer 
the other. I have to. All right. And then we have round table. I was just trying to see if we can get anybody else in besides me here, because I have a lot of questions. <laughs> Because you know that'll be one of the theoretical issues. If the state decides the interest of the child, then you really only have two interest holders, the state and the parents. But we'll have a discussion. Come on, somebody else? One more? One more? We have time for one more? Oh, OK. Deborah. Uh, Angelica, could you explain blended learning? What's the definition of blended learning? That's the first question. Second question is, did you have a theoretical lens through which you are analyzing your, your data, your participatory action research that you're doing. Okay, blended learning environment means a learning environment, uh, 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 um, many moments, places can be virtual or can be pre presential uh, when the parents can learn, okay? And when you say learn, is uh, all the process of learning that is not just to get information, it's also to socialize that information. Uh, that means talk or write or give, or give the opinions. So in that way, ICTs can give us that flexibility, you know? So for that reason, we said blended because it's going to be some uh, moments, places where we can be with the parents. And, the, and in the other way is uh, virtually because we're going to insert the, some virtual tools. For example, the survey, it's going to be virtually. The focus group, groups are going to be refre reflections with the people in, pre pre uh, in presence, yes? So for that reason, we said, it is a blended learning environment. The idea with this research from the university is that we can have, that, that we can continue that line of research. That means that maybe that learning environment is going to be entrepreneur, a social entrepreneur or something like that. But for now it's a research, but with that vision to, 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 um, to have it, to put in, into action all those, well, all that information. Okay? Give them a hand and we'll take